Good evening. Good evening. Our mission in Bright Beginnings is simply to provide each student what he or she needs in order to be successful in school or in life. The brain research has identified the extreme rapid rate of brain development during the first five years of life. It has always made good educational sense to provide high quality early childhood education programs. But Nobel Prize winning economist James Heckman has been pointing out the economic benefits for over 20 years now. This community recognized the benefits of early childhood education programs decades ago. In 1976, the Norge Early Education and Development Center, lovingly known to staff and families as the Need Center, was established um, to educate children identified with special education needs, children with a developmental delay or a disability. Right Beginnings was established in 1983, and that was done as a federal demonstration grant to provide early childhood services to children at risk. The first Bright Beginnings classroom was at Matthew Whaley Elementary School, and um, later moved to Rawlsburg. In 1996, the two separate early childhood programs were combined under the Bright Beginnings umbrella so that all children were served in classrooms together um, and, and served closer to home. In 2002, Williamsburg James City County was recognized um, as one of 10 communities as a community of excellence. It was a national award and it was presented in Washington, D.C. There were a number of community members um, who received the award in Washington, and the award was really for the development of a seamless system of early childhood services for children from birth to five. And the group of people who went to Washington to accept that award were from Child Development Resources, the Community Action Agency, Williamsburg James City County Public Schools, the City of Williamsburg, and James City County. An essential component of the Bright Beginnings program from the very beginning has been family engagement. Teachers provide monthly home visits to each family, and families have the option to do those home visits either at home, um, at school, or in some cases at their work site. I'd like to give you a little bit of a snapshot of who our Bright Beginning students are. They range in age from two years to five years when they're ready to move on to kindergarten. And the numbers on this slide represent the children who are currently in our classrooms right now. So over 50% of our children are children who have a developmental delay or a disability. 43% are children who have identified adverse childhood experiences. We used to refer to those as risk factors, um, but adverse childhood experiences um, is something that's come out of the research from the Harvard Center on the Developing Child, but they are risk factors. 55% of our Bright Beginnings population are economically disadvantaged. 47% are minority students. 53% are white. And 42 of our 327 students currently enrolled are from families whose primary langu language is not English. And those, um, there are families that represent 12 different languages just within our Bright Beginnings program. This slide gives you information about the Virginia's Foundation Blocks for Early Learning. And the foundation blocks for early learning were developed for four-year-old students, and it gives information about what children should um, learn in preschool as four-year-olds. So you see content information here. What you don't see are the skills and abilities, the how of learning. Um, things like attending and engaging, persistence, self-regulation, curiosity, creativity, 
and problem-solving skills. These are all foundational skills to being able to learn new information. And in Bright Beginnings, we have a very intense focus on these foundational skills, how we learn. Once children learn how to learn, then new information is easy to absorb and connect. If you've not visited one of our Bright Beginnings classrooms recently, um, I have a quick video tour um, to give you some sense of what our classrooms look like. These were not staged um, film clips. I, I simply took an iPad one day a few weeks ago and went from classroom to classroom to give you a sense of what happens in those classrooms from our two-year-old students up through our children who are getting ready to transition to kindergarten next school year. No, because sometimes we don't remember. It's a and thing. Ooh, hold on a second, and we need help. So, Gabriella, what are you gonna do to get help? Help. It's a big, big B and a little B. A down here. Tell your friends one more time. Big B and a little B. We have a big uppercase D and a little lowercase D up that here, don't we? And, and, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. Hey, Mr. Mister, tell us what you can do. Mister, can you tell? Two feet on the ground. Let's jump and do it. Do to do today. Do to do today. Do today. Do do do. Two feet on the ground. That's it. Do do do. Two feet on the ground. Jump twice. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. You're welcome to visit our classrooms anytime at all. You didn't have to tell us they, were, they weren't <laughs> staged because you can't stage a two-year-old. No, just, that's right. That's absolutely right, yes. Questions, comments from board members? I ha have oh, a few more slides. <laughs> <laughs> I should have ended it with the children. I thought you were telling me to come visit your classrooms. So like, my bad, sorry. Um, one of the standards that we use to determine the efficacy of our Bright Beginnings program is a nationally normed tool called Teaching Strategies Gold. And this tool um, was normed on a very diverse and a large group of large group of children um, from birth to kindergarten. So it, it helps, it, and the, the norming group included children with and without disabilities. So we're looking at a nice broad group of children um, 
with, with a lot of different characteristics. In order for a child to have to be considered in the accomplished range, they have to be able to perform the skills independently and consistently. Children in that emerging range are children who are still requiring some help from an adult, either prompts or physical help from an adult. Um, so this data is takes a look at our children who were rising kindergarten students at the end of the past school year. So they were our children who were four years old moving into kindergarten this year. And Teaching Strategies Gold tells us about kindergarten benchmarks. Do these children have the knowledge and skills that they should have to be successful in kindergarten? So this, this um, tool gives us a nice look at the whole child. Um, so you can see from a very diverse group of children how well our children are doing when they're ready to leave preschool and move on to kindergarten. I'm going to drill down a little bit more. A second tool that we use is called the PALS PK. And the PALS is um, mandated in the state of Virginia for all four-year-old children who attend public school. And that acronym stands for Phonemic Awareness and Literacy Screening. So I'm going to start you on the right-hand side. We'll go from the right to the left. The column on the far right is the range of scores that the state has said a child who's ready to go on to kindergarten should be scoring somewhere in this range at the end of their four-year-old year. So if you go to that middle column, the spring average score, that's the score where our bright, the average score for our bright beginning students in the spring just before they were ready to go to kindergarten. Um, two of those that I'd like to point out particularly, the lowercase alphabet recognition, the average score being an 18, which is above the range even um, that, that the state has, has put out there for us, and letter sounds is significantly higher than, than the expectation. Um, I think that has a lot to do with our teachers and speech therapists working together um, and that a program that we've put in place over the last couple of years. If you, if you work backwards now to that fall average score, in most cases that fall average score is just to give us a baseline for where children start. Our Bright Beginnings children start higher than most four-year-old students in Virginia. That really speaks to the strong instruction, I believe, that's happening with our two and three-year-old Bright Beginning students. These are some of the other subtests on the, on the PALS, and you, and you will see the same very strong outcomes for our Bright Beginning students. This is not something we can do alone. Um, we're really proud of our outcomes. They come as a result of a very talented staff, strong partnerships with families, and really strong working relationships with other community agencies and community support. Thank you for your time. Now you're done.